so I've actually got an eye beacon attached to my cat. Ruby is alive, Ruby's not going in. Oh, I want to dream for developer happiness. I'm Hector. Uh, you can find me everywhere as uh, at Ekbuma. It's like a short name for my name. And that that's supposed to be me. Um, and uh, I'm an engineer, I guess, a software engineer. Um, and uh, well, I do Rails. Uh, for example, this year I participated in the Rails Rumble. That was like three weeks ago. And I made something finally because it was like always it's hard to f finish something in within two days. Uh, so I made this thing called Contributon, which is a cool dashboard for your application. You, basic, you basically log in with GitHub. I ask you for a, which, of, which of your organiza GitHub organizations do you want to check? Um, or do you want to use? And then I give you a full dashboard with information of all the people inside of that organization. I use Google BigQuery, GitHub Archive, and such, a lot of things. Uh, I learned that you shouldn't use BigQuery. It's freaking expensive. Um, but anyway, uh, if you wanted to check it, it's still in, Contributron, in Rails Rumble domain. It's, it's cool, I will move it. I will move it, and okay, moving forward. As Ben said, I flew all the way from Mexico, and it took me around 28 hours to get here. It was like uh, Mexico, the States, New York, well, Houston, New York, then here. It was like a long, long trip. And all this, this was possible. It is possible because I run a fundraiser and some cool companies, um, like Days, uh, Magma Labs, and Tango Source helped me to come here. And within another bunch of people that helped me, like uh, Sergio Ben, uh, my, fr my friend Lab, and a couple of people from New York, and Nick Sutter, people from all, the, all, all over the world, I thank you to, for, to them for the opportunity that they gave me to be here. So I work for Magma Labs. It's uh, formerly Crowd Interactive. And we do. We are the Magma guys. Um, if you know, if you're a friend of Julian, he's the f the fan number one of the conference. Uh, it's a conference by the beach, by the ocean. It's a really cool. It's a kind of conference that if you are speaking, you will get a small figurine of the luchador, uh, wrestler, matcher. It's really cool. Uh, this Friday we open the call for papers. So if you want to go, uh, please uh, fill up. You enter your um, your proposal, and it's going to be early June, as you can see. It's going to be amazing. I hope to, to see you there. Um, so let's move on to the talk, talk. So the name is Saving Your Rails Application, but I better name it Walking in the Park with a Rails Application. Or Ruby on Rails in production should be a walk in the park. And to start with, uh, I will let say say why why um, why it should be a walk in the park. Why it should be so easy to to run race applications in production? Well, first of all, because we have a great community, um, people like you who come to conference, um, people who gather around the world and 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 do uh, meetups, uh, user groups, and a lot of things help to to make things easy. And they have they help to make things easy by building. Uh, amazing libraries that you can use in your in your projects. Like if you go to Ru Ruby Gems, you will find like there's like a hundred more than a hundred thousand uh, libraries gems uh, available for your projects. And b between those gems, there's cool people doing great things for you. Like uh, Mike Perham is doing Psychic. Jim Wir Jim Wirich, he passed away, but he helped uh, to do a lot of things to the Ruby ecosystem, Arin Rake, uh, being a committer, um, he is such a great, he was such a great guy. And we have, and of course, Adam Patterson, he, who helps 
doing things more adequate for all of us. Um, the next part is because it's really easy to deploy Rails applications. Uh, you have easy, easy tools that you can use like Capistrano, Mina, um, and Days um, that you can use to deploy um, whatever you want with any kind of uh, application server that you want, any kind of flavors. Uh, using any kind of uh, web servers, you can even use Apache, which is, <laughs> I have to say, I have seen people using it. It's weird, but you can do it if you want to. And you have millions of platform as a services or uh, uh, services that, that you can use to host your application. It's really, really easy. All of them has millions of documentation. It's pretty neat. And the last part is because Ruby loves the developer. Ruby, it's pretty easy, you know. Uh, it's really easy to go there and find and, and code some stuff. And But sometimes, um, get things a little bit um, wrong. Um, things get a little bit out, out of control. And for example, you start having issues in production like this thing, like somebody reports that your some users are getting a blank page and you don't know why. Um, you start getting file four from your server and nobody knows why. Some people around the world are saying that they're not uh, able to to enter the page, and because the site goes dead slow for some reason, and you don't know, nobody knows. Um, and of course, you have to fix it. Um, so I'm gonna do it, this talk is gonna be really quick. I will try to do it really quick, um, and I will gonna give you my advice about um, a couple of advices that you should already know, but. Uh, I have I have entered some projects that that they didn't know a couple of one of those things that I'm, I'm going to show you, um, and they, they look like a simple thing to do, but sometimes developers forget to do it or somebody else doesn't have the time. But it is important to take uh, to take those in mind. Um, or for example, uh, one of the uh, one of the advices um, maybe are because. Uh, the developer didn't have the, the care of do it at all. So I will start with uh, the architecture diagram for a simple, simple the, the base, the base simple re production race applications. I'm pretty sure that everyone will have something like this if you're starting. It will be a simple load balancer in the top, and then you have a couple of instances, and then you, want, you will have one database at the end where everything is connected. Of course, it, this can grow with Clusters, services, uh, BP, BPC, whatever, whatever you name it, it can it can grow. But this is the essence, the the first part. Um, so the first thing that you should take in mind is doing a health check. Every application, every race application in production, should have a, a health check, and a health check. Um, it is a route that you access to know that your application is alive. Um, building inside of uh, building it inside of your application, you will um, actually know that your application is alive because sometimes people uh, add it at the um, nginx level, well, all the web server, all the HTTP server level, but that doesn't implies that your application is actually alive. Adding this as a route in your in Rails application will will tell you that. It's alive because the request um, walk through all the, the Rails stack, and then if it responds OK, so you will know. Um, normally, you will have something like this. Well, you can you can um, ping the health check, and you can respond uh, JSON, uh, JSON um, with a single message, or um, uh, or simple text, or a, something that that tells you that the site is it's alive. Later on, you can add this to your um, load balancer configuration, and then what it's going to do basically, you tell your load balancer to ask your instances if they are alive, and you you set the time of period that you you think that it's correct for your your kind of application, and then every time that the, the load balancer asks like, "Hey, you are alive," and then if if it has response, um, then it, it will keep sending. Um, Traffic to it. If not, it will mark the, the the server as not not available, 
and then it will not send in any traffic. That will avoid uh, issues like blank, play, blank pages or three or four, five or four issues from the from the server. And of course, there's there's a game of that. Maybe if you want to, you if you have you have the time, if you want to do it, you can do it by yourself. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty damn simple. Um, this this is more complex because it's inside the gem, but it's basically it's really simple. You just have to do a couple of checks, um, response whatever you want, and that will be fine. Uh, if you look at this code, it's uh, it responds to several formats if you want to. Uh, it responds with errors if you want to. And it, it runs a couple of checks because the gem is uh, more complete. And it can check like, if the database is connected by running a simple command like active record connection, established connection. And if, the, and if that is OK, that will tell you that the connection to the database is successfully. Um, so this is pretty simple. You can do it, uh, just add a simple uh, controller to your application, and you're ready to go. The next part is the next advice. It is monitoring. Monitoring is really important because process processes in the in the Unix box there are there, if you don't look at them, they go out of control. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm talking specifically of nginx, uh, sorry, Unicorn, and imagine that that it's a virtual instance. And this can be a droplet from the ocean or it can be an EC2 instance, or whatever. And Unicorn, if you don't know how to work, how it works, uh, basically, um, Unicorn, if, when you spawn Unicorn, it will create sub-child little unicorns that will, um, <coughs> that will ha handle your, um, your every request, and it will like emulate uh, concurrency, which is not uh, Concurrency, Ruby concurrency, but you will get some concurrency on your application. But with Unicorn and these small processes, the problem it is that some some sometimes your code is really bad, and then processes start to to grow in memory size, and then if you don't kill them, uh, they will consume your old server, and then your instance will be unavailable. Um, for example, if you if we check checked here, we can see how processes are created. Uh, we can see at the top, at, at the beginning of the list, like how Ruby processes are created, and they are dying um, because because of this uh, monitoring. Um, there's tools that you can use for that. Uh, I used to use Blue Pill. It, I think it's one of the most used out there. I really don't like it because it's really buggy. Um, but there's people. I think uh, these course people that were doing it in their thingy. But I. I personally don't like it. Um, I, I I would like to try Inspector since it's from the from the Psychic creator, so it should be good. Uh, and most people use God and Monit. Uh, those are like more um, big weight, uh, so more complete if you want to use it. I personally, I'm using this thing called I. I found it sometime. I was looking for the for a solution uh, because I didn't want to use Monit or God or something like really big. I just want something lightweight to monitor just Unicorn. And then I found this one. And if you are from Germany and you know this guy, please tell him thank you, because it's a really light, lightweight uh, monitor that basically um, it keeps control of your process. This is our um, Unicorn processes. And it, it gives you a nice um, UI. <laughs> In the terminal, where you can see, you can watch the, the processes being killed, or be, see, being, or to watch how ma how many many money it's cons are consuming one of them, and it's really simple to configure. You simple um, set what um, you create an I an, sorry an I uh, configuration file, and then you tell okay I'm gonna use Unicorn, and this is gonna be the the commands to start, kill it, restart it. And all that jazz, and then you you said okay. And then children monitors. Let's keep it. Let's keep it um, as low as you want to. In this case, I'm telling like just use, just don't don't let them use more than <coughs> three uh, um, 350 megabytes of memory in uh, more than three periods every five periods, and every every check runs uh, every 10 seconds. So that keeps um, everything alive. Um, 
And just just to match this thing, in the unicorn file, I just, since here I'm setting like it is 350, I have to take in, in, in account how many, how much memory do I have in my server to be able to start the process, the number of processes that will um, help to, the number of processes that my server can handle without uh, filling out the memory. So if, if I am using 350 and, well, this specific uh, server has uh, eight gigabyte, gigabits of memory, I probably wanna use probably the less, the, the half of the server. So I'm setting up, uh, where is it? Number of process, I don't see it. it. Second line, there you go. Second line, number of process, 13 process, it's equals uh, to 4,400, 4, like 4,500 megabits, so you will be fine when all the processes start. Um, the next part, profiling. Um, I heard uh, just a couple of weeks ago somebody saying that if you are running a Rails application and you are not profil profiling, you are not doing a Rails application because you don't have any visibility of what is happening. So probably you should you you know them, uh, just use them. Uh, probably you are using one of those. I I like New Relic because it gives you nice graphs and pretty nice insights. It's pretty expensive if you want to do like uh, if you want to save like 30 days or more. But it will help you. It, it will help you in times where you don't have, you don't know anything about your application. Um, it gives you nice insights about how many memories consuming your servers and, and and more things. The other one that I use is Skylight. It's the new thing about with um, the guys from Tilde, uh, Jehuda. It's running. It's pretty amazing to solve memory issues. So basically, you just hook the thing. Uh, just let it run, let, let set traffic in your application, and you will know which part of your application are um, consuming the, the most of the memory, and, and you can take action of that. For example, this, uh, this view, uh, it's taking like two milliseconds. It's like, what, what, it's taking so much? So you can go out there and start making some uh, assumptions and start uh, making some fixes. Next, uh, this is, that simple as well. Uh, error notifications. Uh, there's several several services that you can use. Um, I like Honey Badger because it gives you tons of information. Um, again, I think it's I don't remember how it's pricing, but it's something useful. And you're, if you are running a startup, you should use it no matter if it take if it costs you a couple of more dollars. Um, it gives you a nice application of the of the server where it's running and um, and what is the process, the cookies, it gives you everything that you need to debug an issue. So um, before moving on, I, I forget to add one last um, tool that you should add in, like it's like logging. You should be adding like Logstash, Kibana, some, some, um, some tool that basically aggregates all the logging that you have in your servers because you have application servers, you have uh, unicorns, well you have application servers, you have HTTP uh, server login, you have um, system login, you have, if you have Redis, you have Redis login, if you have Scikit, you have Scikit login, you have like a bunch of things. If you want to debug something, you cannot, it's really hard to go and just a tail in one log, a tail in another, and then you have your screen split up in 20, 20 slices to, to, to see what's going on. Um, so, um, the next, the next thing is, let's keep an eye on, on memory. This is going to be really, I, I think it's going to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, first of all, the Ruby on Rails footprint. Basically, um, I don't know if you know, you should know, but when you start your application, uh, as it, at, as it is growing, it will start to grabbing more and more memory, because it needs to allocate more objects at booting. So. For example, one some, something that happened to us one time is like we were around 300 megabytes, megabits in in memory footprint when we were booting our race application, and suddenly uh, we were using 
more than a hundred, four more, a hundred more megabits in the, in the, um, at the start in the the Rails application. So we don't, we were like, what is happening? And this was um, provoking more issues. For example, um, the monitor, the process monitor was set to only use to to cap the. Um, to kill the process when they were consuming more than 350. So that means at the load of the application, at the boot of the application, every child process was consuming 400, more than 400. So they were getting killed every 60 seconds. So we were having a big issue in production. So we started thinking what happened? So we, uh, I think it's hard to read. Yeah, but I will tell you. So we were adding, we, we add these features called MaxMine. Basically, if you want to do IP lookup in your application, you pay a service for that. And then there's our, this guy called MaxMine. They have a cool service where you can download a database of IPs, and then um, you can uh, basically use the gem, and then you just pass the IP that you are solving from the, from the load balancer, and um, it will tell you where from where it's coming from. It will give you detailed information. So I look at the file, and it was 84 megabytes. So uh, we were naive, or I didn't know, or I was dumb or idiot at the same time. Uh, but because basically we were loading this file at booting in an initializer. So we were telling like initialize max mine. Um, Max, maxman class with the file. So every time that the Rails application boots, boom, you have 80, more than 80 uh, megabytes loaded. Um, so yeah, what we did was, oh, we added this, I'm showing like how we added. Um, and then we, we, we thought, okay, we need to do something. So we find out that maxman has a CSV version and we say, well, we grab the CSV, and then we run a import, and we, went, we populate everything in the database. That should be simple. But then <laughs> we find something. The CSV has nine, more than nine million rows. So if you're thinking to do this in Ruby, well, it's not going to happen. So we start thinking, and we, have to, we need to find a solution because we need that feature, and we cannot move out. So after looking around, we found that there's a cool thing from MySQL called um, data import. No, yeah, loading file, sorry. Data, data into a file, so, yeah. Data into a table, sorry. So what we did was create a table. Um, basically, we, we went to Rails, we create a table, and we went to, to MySQL and we load a file. And we basically, we told, like, load data into file from this file and populate these tables. And this happens in, like, 30 seconds or something. It was pretty amazing, and that solved the issue. And um, now we changed a little bit how we were doing the, the, EP, the IP lockup in the, when a user was getting to the page. And um, we found this little guy from the standard library, one of those guys from... from like Sergio was talking in the morning, those hidden libraries, the IP address, it's part of the standard library. So basically you part, you, you send an address and it gives you a nice integer. Because if you don't use that, you need to use um, MySQL um, uh, functions, which is really slow. With this, it's pretty neat. You pass the, the address, the IP address, and then you boom, you got it. And then you can do, and then you can just do a simple query. So this is pretty nice. Um, then another another thing, it's a memory leak. So we were like in development, like in the team, and we were thinking about performance and things that we should in, improve. And we we were thinking like we, oh, there's a big application, there's many 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 places to to work with. Um, so where we should start? So somebody was complaining about one specific. Um, page uh, in the development team, um, and then I went to the to the I, I opened my my development my development environment. Um, I went to the route, 
And then after refreshing a couple of times, I look this thing in the in the active in the activity processor activity monitor from the from from my from my laptop. So it was growing and growing and growing. So it was like I was already uh, refreshing like three times, and it, it was al already using almost three gigabits of memory, uh, which is which is a lot. So I used New Relic uh, in development to figure out what's going on. And if you can see, there's like massive time going on, like serious time of objects and things going on that in that specific um, in that specific route. So um, I started thinking again, how can I fix this? So I started uh, starting to read a couple of blog posts from Sam Sanfron and from other people. And I found that there's a couple of nice tool set that you can use in your Rails application to figure out what's freaking going on and how to fix it. And a couple of those are, basically this is, this is my, my small tool set for these cases. Uh, it works pretty well. And the first one that I'm using, it's Oink. Uh, I love the, the name of the gem. Uh, and it gives you the number of objects allocated in, um, in a route, basically, if you go to the whatever slash whatever um, a couple of times, it will generate a log file, and then you you use the oin command to and then pass the log file, and then you will have a nice output of what is happening. Um, I missed a summary, but there's a summary, uh, but the, you can see that there's like uh, well, a lot of objects. Uh, you can see there's millions of objects, like thousands of ob objects being uh, allocated in in that specific site. So, so um, to be, well, that's like to be more clear. Um, so we, uh, I start thinking, so how to fix that? Why is this happening? Why we have too many objects there? So there should be a reason. So I went to the method in the controller and we were doing this. So basically we didn't care or, or when we start doing this, we were in a rush or something, but we were doing several times, several things, several times. So if you look at the arrows, basically it's all of them um, are the same uh, query to the database, just using a different um, scope um, or condition. So this is wrong. And also we have like millions of uh, um, instance variables, so we need to fix that. So after a little bit of um, hard, hard time, I figured out how to fix it, and it's it was really, well, it was not simple at all, because there's a lot of things going on. So what what we, what I am doing is basically do a big word uh, with all the includes that I need, uh, and that's it. And then I do, um, Group by, and then I have a small, I have a, um, an object where I can just look for the key that I want, and then that's it. Everything in the, in the view will keep the same. This is only going to fix things in the back end for me. Um, but it, 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 it works. Uh, something that I used tied with that was the gem bullet, because it give, uh, it helped me to find the M plus one queries that I was doing wrong. Basically, when you add it, it tells you, uh, yes, which is, oh no, this is A, what is this? I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the, M, M, the bullet, so you can see the M plus one. So it tells you, basically, you should go there and add your uh, include statement. But you, you have to be careful because not all the times it works. Sometimes it tells you something, but it is not true, or it, it cannot be it's not be possible to do it in a way that it wanted. But anyway, um, after doing all my fixes, um, we can see that the number of memory was reduced, um, was really reduced, and the number of objects. Uh, I think in the first time I have like six sixty five thousand, and this one. Uh, yeah, and this one I only I only have 
2000. It's still a, a little, a, a lot, but it like it was like a really, really gain. If we see this thing um, at the beginning, it was 35,000 something, and now we only have 2,000. So it was pretty. I was pretty happy. And we, when we went to this to production, it was amazing. Uh, we saw in the memory of the memory usage of the of the server the the complete uh, performance gain. It wasn't uh, this wasn't a performance gain for the client side, but it was a really a performance gain for a for the servers for the for the usage of the processes in the server. The, because at the end it, everything was cached in the in the front end, but the server was taking a breath. It was not. Um, using that that that, me that much memory, and of course I was super happy about it. Not all the people in the team was like that because some someone of, someone of them will tell me that we were expecting like performance for the for the final user, but you cannot win all the battles at the same time. Um, I just have one more extra. It is not related to memory. It's really simple. Um, I don't know if that happened to you, but. Uh, I don't know if you have found this, but um, I found this, this uh, the other day. And it's basically psychic, it's dead fast. Um, what I mean, it is the um, psychic, it's more faster than your database. So what happens it is that psychic when you send something to Scikit, it will start to consuming whatever you send it before every, before even even it is ready for for to be processed. So we were having we we will have something like this. Um, basically, uh, we have an after save. We have a method, and the method basically what it does it mo it moves the um, it creates a process in um, in Psychic, and it will be performed in a queue in a worker. So this is it was easy. Everybody said like, okay, just add it. There's no big deal. But then in the log, in the, in the logs, we start seeing these things, like um, active record not found, uh, an active record not found, an active record not found. What it what what's happening? It is like when Scikit grabs um, uh, the process, um, the the transaction hasn't finished yet. So it tries to look because you, basically what you do is a find again of the process that you that of the object that you want to do, but it's not in the database yet, so you, it cannot do anything. So the easy way to solve it it is basically put it in an after commit, move it to, from an after save to an after, to an after commit. But there's um, a downside about this: it this will be really hard to test. So you will be struggling how to fix your test if you're doing something like this. And um, if you're doing this thing in a state machine, uh, that will be even harder because your state machine has transactions and the transactions will finish before, no, oh, the transactions will be finished before and the process on Scikit will trigger, but the transactions in the database won't be closed. So it will be really hard. You will have to play with a uh, attribute accessors or some or, or do some magic trick to avoid this or move the uh, move the call where you create the process in the in the in, in psychic out of the state machine there's a gem um, I don't remember the name of course that basically it add after commit hooks to a state machine um, I don't know if it still works but anyway um, I just want to say, say that you have, with, with this talk, um, I want to say that you have plenty of options to look up your Rails application. There's flavors for everybody. Um, you, shouldn't, um, you shouldn't not do anything because you don't like, maybe, or you don't care, or I don't know. There's developers that, that think in that way. Um, there's some things that suits for your, your application. Just please think about it, think in memory, uh, and use um, at least all of the um, tools that I show you. And, ah, and 
Thanks, I think it said, I, think, I hope it said the things. I don't know. Um, thank you. <laughs>